Hello, welcome to the stream. I think they are, but it's very possible that they are. So it's you. Oh, I forgot my message. Hold on. I sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us, too. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Oui. You really must learn to conceal your weaknesses better. If you don't want your foes to use them against you. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all, and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. It is the natural order of things, Monsieur de Richet. There have always been men who govern other men. That is simply the way it is. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet, they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. Filthy swine! I'm going to open this damn door and skin you alive! You're not going to get the better of us! Mother... Louis, you've come around. How do you feel? Uh, I... It hurts. Mother... I... I... I can't feel my arm. Louis, I had to cauterize it with what I could find. Where's my arm? We'll get through this, Louis. Don't worry. I think I found a solution. You'll see. We gotta leave. No, don't, don't put your arm in there. Louis, we can't leave without it. It's our last chance. I need to see this through to the end. I must do it. We've done it, Louis. Look. Stubborn as a mule. Come on, up you get. I'll help you. Easy does it. You've lost a lot of blood. <sighs> And now what? Let's take what we came for. Wait. I've got to know what I did wrong. That Get is me. one fearsome mechanism. In fact, if I hadn't watched you beforehand, I would never have found the right combination. <sighs> Tell me. It was. Where did I go wrong? The three nails? Yes, it, it's true. They let you open the iris. Yes, but you still need to find the right theme, don't you? The fresco was a trap. Apart from the fresco, everything pointed to the crucifixion. The things that make it possible to activate the mechanism are associated with the crucifixion. The cross to activate the mechanism, and the nails to choose a date. That's what I thought. What did you do once you uncovered the iris? I matched the icon of the crown of thorns 
with the town of Golgotha, where the crucifixion took place. Well, how did you manage to crack the puzzle? Then I had to link the crown of thorns to the date of the crucifixion, according to the exegesis. But I failed to understand the first time. With that theme in mind, I chose 26M, which represents the 26th of March. To conclude, I had to use the armillary sphere to find the moon corresponding to the day of the crucifixion, which turned out to be in the first quarter. All that was left to do was to link all those elements on the same axis. I still think it was the moon. I think I, I think I got the the quarter moon wrong. But where are we? I don't know, but we better not hang around. Be careful, Mother. As if me saying that will make any difference. Knowing Mortimer, I wouldn't be surprised if he rigged his crypt with traps. So you think the door is not enough? Do you want to wager your other hand? You've got a point there. We have to find that weapon. What do you know about the Holy Lance, Louis? The what? The Lance of Longinus the Centurion. Now that you mention it, I did catch Von Volner in the middle of an altercation with Piaggi. What? Von Volner blamed his eminence for having supplied Mortimer with all the lances in the Vatican's possession. If Mortimer has all of them in his possession, it's not going to help us. Seriously? You don't really believe that fable, do you? Every fable is founded on true events. I'm not saying that everything adds up, but imagine if it really did exist. Very well. Now what? Well, now you know what you need to find. Pardon? I have to get to the wharf to prepare our departure. Let's get off this cursed island as quickly as we can. We shall come back when we are ready and armed. But hang on. Louis, let's first get to safety. We shall come back when we have the upper hand. Fear not. You take care of getting the lance. It's imperative. I'll take care of preparing our departure. Hang on. I at least tell me everything you know about this lance. But I have never seen it. There's nothing else I can say, Louis. Well, you can always go snooping around Mortimer's study. I remember seeing paintings of Longinus there. Hang on a second. What's the matter? Why did you shoot Emily's sister? Do you really think now is the right time for this? I want to know, Mother. Why did you betray her? Listen, Louis. I don't think you've really understood my interest in the Al-Azif. It's not just simple curiosity about some old relic. You tried to kill her. And I had no choice for crying out loud. It must not fall into the hands of the demons, or we are all doomed. Don't you see? Listen. I don't know exactly what it contains, but I prefer to be one step ahead. If they want it, there must be a reason. And even if I don't know what it is, I want to stop them for safety's sake, no matter what. Nothing will stop you if I understand correctly. Not even- Enough, Louis. If you could see the extent of their power as I do, then you would understand what I'm saying. All right, we'll do it your way. One more thing. If they find you in possession of the lance, they won't let you get away with it. Choose only one and hide it under your jacket so you don't get caught with it. Then run and meet me on the wharf. 
And if I get caught? If they catch you in possession of the lands, we're all doomed. Do you understand? Perfectly. Good. And go talk to Piaggi. He's the one who probably knows the most about this. Honey, the remedy of the gods. The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. The Gospel of St. John is the most detailed on the subject of the crucifixion. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a shimmering lance pierced his side. And forthwith there came out blood and water. And he that saw it bore witness. And his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. A shimmering lance? What is this telling me? I'm really wondering how this is going to go in like two more parts because the way this is going, this really seems like it's like, I mean, really leaving a conclusion like, and, well, I don't know. It 
just seems like everything would be coming out right now. Like, this is all... Like... The curtain drops... Up. All the pretenses dropped, just like... Um, all the secrets will come out. Apparently, maybe, supposedly. Which means... You know, that should be a conclusion. But... Oh, yeah. Maybe that, like... Maybe it just means the last chapter will be more... His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. The Cardinal's not in his room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself. Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well, I... 
I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you could- You are not listening to me. You are playing with fire. I heard you speak to Mr. Von Volner about it, and I was wondering if you could tell me something about it. That was a private conversation. How could I have known that he was listening to us? Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lands, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. His nose is bleeding. So, you are looking for the holy lance of Longinus, are you? Exactly. Frank and direct. I like that. Thank you for not trying to be sly. You are looking for the lance. You should know, you are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? Yes, my mother knows about it. Of course, Sarah. Who else? No one else. What are you going to use the lance for, exactly? If I told you why I needed this lance, you would never believe it. Trust me, you can tell me anything. It's our only chance to vanquish the demons. Oh, my dear God, Louis. You sound just like Sarah. Do you realize you are following the same path, step by step? Sarah also started by imagining things. She, too, spoke of demons, I am told. She could no longer speak to anyone saw a hidden monster in every guest, lurking in the shadows, ready to devour her. You must let us help you. Louis, I thank you for your sincerity. I shall answer you about Longinus. You deserve to be told. His spear-headed lance did indeed pierce the side of the Messiah. His blood gushed out covering the head of the lance. It was covered in the blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You are welcome. Be careful, Louis. You are on a perilous path. Don't follow Sarah's demons, my boy. Don't delve too deeply into her delusions, or you won't be able to come back. The demons that she is frantically trying to drive away are in her own mind. Take good care of yourself. God keep you. Oh, you think I have more information? Then let's...
honey. I couldn't have hoped for better. Okay, so I feel like it's tough. Saint Longinus. Let's take a closer look at his lance. It is shaped like a leaf, but like the real lance, maybe. How can I be sure? This statue does represent Longinus, armed with a lance that wounded Jesus, the Holy Lance. How can I find out if this is an exact representation? There's no way of being certain of it. No, this is too easy. Mortimer's trying to throw me off the track again. It seems too visible to be true. Impossible not to see the statue on first glance, given its size. And Mortimer has no interest in making the shape of the true lance so easy to see. Adoration of the Shepherds with Saints Longinus and John, Giulio Romano, 1534. Longinus is holding the Holy Lance in his left hand, and I'll bet he's holding the sponge soaked in holy blood in the other hand. Yes! Here we can see that the Holy Lance is represented in the shape of a spear. I better make sure I check this twice. It's, it's a work that dates from the Renaissance. And there's nothing to say that it's not based on erroneous elements. This work is an order from Lord Mortimer. All the details have been conceived with a specific goal in mind. Upon closer examination, you can see that even the style clashes with that of most of the other works in the manor. No. If Mortimer has taken special care as the conception and the exhibition of this painting in his study, in the same way as for the Nightmare painting, it must be of some significance. And that is indeed the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. But I believe what I read in the letter from Milan addressed to Mortimer. There's every reason to believe that this painting has been modified according to his guidelines to represent the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. Just referencing.
hits. The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. The Gospel of St. John is the most detailed on the subject of the crucifixion. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a shimmering lance pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. And he that saw it bore witness, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true. That ye might believe. A shimmering lance. What is this telling me? The medieval hermetic traditions evoked the idea of using noble materials for relics, which the monasteries often made themselves in order to attract pilgrims. Of course, they had to inspire greatness. So here, we might think of gold, whereas a centurion could not have hoped for anything better than copper at the time. The true lance would not have been a luxurious weapon. This wild, sorry. The sarcophagus is engraved with the name of Clemens the Third. Good God, the one whose cross allowed me to enter. Clemens III, Clémentois in French. How come his tomb ended up here and not in the Vatican? This sarcophagus is beautifully made, but ancient. Stone is marked by the passage of time, but it's really well preserved. has no name. I wonder who it was for. I can see that this spear has a, a so-called leaf shape. It is copper-rimmed. I can see the tip is engraved with the symbol of the Eye of Ra.
Cheers. Hmm. It was cut a long time ago. You could tell by the rough hacks of the tool and the patina of the stone. This sarcophagus is very ancient. Might say it's several centuries old. The sarcophagus has been ravaged by time. It's sort of ageless, I guess. It's entirely sculpted. These symbols, these grooves, cuneiform script. This is humanity's oldest alphabet, the language of Babel. Sadly, no one today even knows how to decipher it. There's also some text engraved beneath in ancient Greek, Sargon. see that this lance has a particular spear shape. It is coated in gold. You can distinguish the symbol of the fish engraved on the tip, barely noticeable. that this lance has a leaf shape and well it's in gold i can see that a crucifix is engraved on the tip just barely visible Take a look at this lance here. It has a very special leaf shape. It is copper rimmed, and I can see a fish symbol engraved on the tip. This lance has the shape of a boar spear. The blade is partially coated in copper, and I can just make out the symbol of the eye of Ra engraved on the tip. Since that the, they have the eye of Ra, 
is that was the thing of the Egyptians. I think with the Romans. I'm not even there. I can see this lance has a spear shape, it is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. Especially since the Christian symbol was on the statue, which Louis says was probably a lie to throw you off. This lance has a leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. The symbol of the Christian fish is engraved on the tip. Sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, uh, it's far too heavy. I'm not going to be able to do it on my own. Oh, that's nice. Thanks for that game. It looks like it's empty. Is interesting. It's like the that, sarcophagus yeah, of right Lord five. Mortimer. I can see this lance has a spear shape, it is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. 
Gospel of St. John is the most detailed on the subject of the crucifixion. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs, but one of the soldiers with a shimmering lance pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water, and he that saw it bore witness. And his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. A shimmering lance? What is this telling me? The name of the Roman soldier who killed Christ never appears in the biblical canon. Yet, it is said that he was a centurion and was called Longinus. The medieval hermetic traditions evoke the idea of using noble materials for relics, which the monasteries often made themselves in order to attract pilgrims. Of course, they had to inspire greatness. So here, we might think of gold, whereas a centurion could not have hoped for anything better than copper at the time. The true lance would not have been a luxurious weapon. I can see that this lance has the shape of a boar spear. The blade is partially coated in copper, and I can just make out the symbol of the Eye of Ra engraved on the tip. There's no room for error. Am I sure this is the one to take? Not really. Did not find out what was the last. That's unfortunate.
I'm already pressed for time as it is. Mother's waiting for me on the wharf. Richet, sticking your nose everywhere again. Wow, what's the matter with him? Excuse me, monsieur, I don't follow you. I haven't come all this way just to fail so close to the goal. Why, what are you talking about? I am talking about what you are doing. This conference is going to boost my career. There is no question of me letting you ruin everything. I just surprised Piaget and Bolner talking. You are about to rob Mortimer. Give me what you took from him immediately. Let's keep calm, please. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll have to cut this short, quick. Look, I don't know what you're going on about, and I don't have time for this right now. Don't think on getting rid of me so easily, Derichet. Where have you been? I've been in the crypt of the manor. What the hell were you doing there? I was visiting and got lost. I do believe that is the worst lie anyone has ever told me. You are not even qualified to be here among us. You leave me no choice. Come with me. Mikis, what is this? So I just smack the shit out of Pauline. Awesome game. 10 out, 10 out of 10. Hmm. Like green. I thought she's like on the whole other side. Oh. Anyway, I'll go this way. Ah, Louis. Perfect timing. As luck would have it. Come, my boy. I would like to have a word with you. Oh. Come closer, please. It's time we had a little chat. I wanted you... Oh no, your hand! Damn it, no! So that's it. She is prepared to use you. What do you mean? It wasn't enough for her to lose her hand. She had to make you lose yours too. 
I cannot permit this to continue. Louis, it's time you found out the truth. I've been observing you since you arrived. I see you running all over the grounds in the search of Sarah. I would like to prevent her from leading you even further down the wrong road. The wrong road? Louis, Sarah has made her own choices of her own free will, and I would like for you to have the same chance. You see, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time, Louis. I am aware of her theory. About me? About Gregory? About the demons? She's right. Look at me. I have inhabited this body since 1191. For the last 602 years, I have been this dear William Mortimer. You've been Mortimer for 600 years? How long have the demons been among mankind? Oh, I don't think I'd be lying if I said that we have always been here. And you truly have the power to manipulate the thoughts of men. That's right. Every demon has the capacity to infiltrate the minds of men and to read and steer their thoughts. And what do you do with this power? We help them, of course. And how is it you help men exactly? Let's just say that without us, Man would probably never have left his cave. Fire, the wheel, tools, writing. We are the spark that inspires man to search, to grow, to evolve. Can you tell me more about your capacities, your supernatural powers? Supernatural? From my point of view, they are perfectly natural. Well, Louis, just because the monkey does not fly, doesn't mean that we should consider the bird a supernatural creature. We are all part of a grand design. But, we was, are simply but, right. made like this. By developing our art, we are able to read thoughts as well as write in the minds of men. It is possible for us to make them bow to our desire, but it doesn't work without leaving some scars. Lucifer, the fallen archangel, left heaven accompanied by 133,306,668 angels. Is it true that there are that many of you? No, I assure you, Louis. Forget your Bible class. It's ridiculous. We are not angels. We don't have wings. There is certainly nowhere near a million of us. And for that matter, no sacred human text represents us correctly. There are several families, and the family to which I belong has eight siblings, including Gregory and myself. Sir Gregory is your brother? Yes, what can I say? <laughs> you can't choose your family. But it is very difficult to know exactly how many of us there are because a large number of our kind remain hidden or never reveal themselves even to us. How would you qualify your species, scientifically? Hmm, good question. What is your area of expertise? <laughs> My lord, to tell you the truth, I don't see myself as a scientist. Well, consider us as a simple species still unknown to most of men. Thus, we are born. We have the capacity to change bodies, that is all. What are the demon's projects for humanity? Our aim has long since been to protect humanity from itself. On the other hand, although we give them the impulse to succeed, we don't all agree as to the path they take to achieve it. What has my mother got to do with all this? She embarked on a crusade many years ago 
to kill all the demons. That must have upset you. I imagine you retaliated. No. I'm afraid she never forgave me. Forgave what? We met when she was still just a young woman. I appeared to her in a different form because I didn't want to reveal the identity of Lord Mortimer at that time. She was looking for someone interested in the occult to decipher an ancient book. We spent many years together until I revealed my true nature to her. The old book was Alazif, wasn't it? Did she speak about it? Not so long ago, yes. Indeed, it was already Alazif. She wanted to unlock the secrets. Why should I trust you? I'm not asking you to, Louis. If you are still in doubt about the demons, I can assure you that won't last long. But why me? Why do I tell you about the greatest secret ever revealed to man? It's... that's right. I'm coming to that. Don't worry. Continue. Where is this missing? Where is this this? Come closer, please. It's time we had a little chat. I wanted you... Oh no, your hand! Damn it, no! So that's it. She is prepared to use you. What do you mean? It wasn't enough for her to lose her hand. She had to make you lose yours too. I cannot permit this to continue. Louis, it's time you found out the truth. I've been observing you since you arrived. I see you running all over the grounds in the search of Sarah. I would like to prevent her from leading you even further down the wrong road. The wrong road? Louis, Sarah has made her own choices of her own free will, and I would like for you to have the same chance. You see, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time, Louis. I am aware of her theory. About me? About Gregory? About the demon? She's right. Look at me. I have inhabited this body since 1191. For the last 602 years, I have been this dear William Mortimer. You're the devil incarnate. The devil? I'm not saying that all Judeo-Christian folklore hasn't served us, but the truth is, of course, something quite different. Please, don't look at us through the primitive prism of religions. I am not hiding any horns or goat's feet, Louis. I have no tail. Why do you bring up folklore? You mean that you've taken advantage of people's beliefs? No, not exactly. I mean that we in fact created them from scratch. It is amazing to see how mankind has such a strong need to believe in something superior to itself. It was very instructive for what was to come. But why me? 
Why do I tell you about the greatest secret ever revealed to man? It's... that's right. I'm coming to that. Don't worry. Continue. Louis, it's time you opened your eyes. Come, you'll soon see. After you. So, Von Borchard, he was looking for the Alazif for you. Exactly. Alazif has always belonged to my family, Louis. And with good reason. My father wrote much of it. Can you tell me what you've done with... What? You mean the Alazif? No, I already know that. Sarah came here with it and got rid of it. I was thinking of Von Borchardt. He isn't essential, but he is a trusted person. He's a prisoner at our headquarters in Paris. All right. If you could manipulate us mentally, what's the point of all the theatrics of the conference? You must suspect that we asked ourselves that very same question. For many centuries, we didn't organize any conferences. And most of the time, it ended in civil war between demons. Many of us were killed during this period. The idea of organizing conferences was the answer to everything. The interest being to erect some rules among ourselves. Our family first divided up all the principal countries of the world. Now, whenever one of us wants to propose a major change between these countries, they summon the demon in question and initiate a conference. The demon that initiates the proposition doesn't have to give notification of the subject of the conference beforehand. Consequently, we participate along with our best assets. Once the humans are brought together, the conference begins, but we are forbidden to use our talents to influence the participants. The first meeting is held in order to expose the subject to all the participants, followed by several days of reflection, during which we are allowed to be persuasive, but not to impose our will. A second meeting closes the conference with a final vote. So, for you it's a game, isn't it? I understand your remark, but... After living several centuries, you stand back and enjoy what reflection and pleasure you can. But how do you agree on global policy? Locally, we often have competing interests, and sometimes we start wars between men which are linked to our disagreements. Most of the time, our father steps in and gives directives, which my family follow to the letter. Indeed, in my opinion, it is high time we moved on. What do you mean? I mean that a new era must begin. The old monarchic regimes are outdated, and it's time to evolve. Did what happened to Elizabeth Adams have anything to do with you? Mm, unfortunately, the poor girl became an issue between us, in spite of herself. A family of demons is still a family, and as in all families, there are disputes. Elizabeth's family, the Adams, has always been under the patriarchal control of my father. As he and myself are not really on very good terms, sending poor Elizabeth here was terribly rude of him, really. You did accept, though? Mm, no, I would say rather I was presented with a fait accompli by Gregory and went along with the intention of helping her. But this is my castle, and everyone is the master of their own home. You're the one who killed her. The poor girl was condemned, Louis. Don't you think it better that she stopped living like a slave, being mentally raped by my father since the day she was born? You're joking. You don't know everything. She might have recovered from everything she had suffered. Between the unyielding control of my father and your mother's terrible treatments, I wouldn't wish a life like that on anyone. But... It is also true, I felt obliged to get rid of her. You'll understand one day, you'll see. I hope I've answered all your questions, Louis. Come, I've something to show you. There... there is one question that remains to be answered. Why me? Why tell me all of this? Oh, haven't you guessed yet?
I've got an idea, but it might seem stupid. Trust me. Am I one? I mean, am I a demon? Would you like that? No, I don't think so. I'm just a man, and that's fine with me. Look, we are of the gods, Louis. Always have been. You, as much as me, you are one of us, Louis. You, too, are a demon. Are you serious? You know it. Deep down inside, you know I am telling you the truth. Where do you think that natural charismatic presence comes from? Your talent yep. must already have manifested itself somehow. Have visions. you ever had any visions? No. Stop it, it's absurd. Have you never found yourself suddenly inside someone else's body without knowing why? No. Whilst asleep, maybe? That's how it often happens the first time. Your spirit wanders unconsciously. My mother can't have lied to me about that. It's true. Your real mother would never have lied I... to you. I... What do you mean? Louis. I would rather you found this out from her own lips, but it's important that you know. Sarah is not your mother. I... What? I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Louis. But you must know the truth before you commit an irreparable act. No, I... No. It, no, it's not possible. You are my son. <laughs> So this dressing just disappeared. Not too shaken up. You've experienced many significant events since your arrival. To tell you the truth, I don't get much time to ask myself those questions. Quite right. Best not to react to all this too suddenly. Take some time to think about it all. For now, I think you ought to find Sarah, my son. You ought to talk things over with her. So she's been lying to me all along? Let her justify herself. What's done is done. Sarah must explain herself. You must clear the air. We'll have all the time we need to talk afterwards. But all in good time. B before you join her, I'd like to give you something. As a demon, I would like to introduce you to your first talent. What do you mean? Open your mind, my son. Relax. You hold immense power. It's already there inside you. Empty your mind of all thoughts. Just let me show you the way. I should relax. Open your mind. Hear my voice. Feel the vibrations and listen to what has been happening to you deep inside, but which you have been concealing. Trust yourself. It's all already in there. I... I can hear something. Now breathe. It's... A sound very, very faint. That's right. Concentrate on it. My voice is growing fainter, but I am here. I... Whispers. Words. Mixed voices. Mm. Focus on one of them. Don't be afraid. I... I sense a stream. Some words are clear, but... Not all of them. Let them enter into your mind. I hear them. Now, now I can hear a clear voice. Well done, Louis. Congratulations. What was it? You are now able to read people's minds. I, what? You heard me. From now on, whenever a human speaks to you, you will be able to read their current thoughts. So, if you need to know something in particular from someone, all you have to do is make them think about it. But... I'd be violating their minds, wouldn't I? No, no. Nothing of the sort. You won't really be penetrating their psyches. Let's just say you'll be picking up residual signals emitted by their thoughts. It isn't intrusive at all, rest assured. There are also a few rules you need to know that govern this talent when used between ourselves. You can read the thoughts of demons as well as of humans. But be careful. A demon more experienced than yourself will know that you are spying and will often react quite violently. It's considered bad form to play around the psyche of another demon. It's a question of courtesy. But let's be clear. What is most considered bad form is getting caught. So I would advise against trying to read the thoughts of Gregory, for example. 
home? Yes, the old grump is touchy, and rather a stickler about the conventions. On that note, go and see Sarah, Louis. Otherwise, she might leave without you. We'll continue this discussion later, if you want. Just join me in my study when you've finished. Here now, able to hear superficial thoughts of your interlocutors who are repenting. Each use of mind reading costs one essence point. Ignoring one pack when confronted, using two by explaining the vulnerability, and three consuming devil's horn. That's good to know. You're right. I need to go now. See you later, Lord Mortimer. One more thing. If you want to know the truth about your birth, ask her about Paris, 1763, at 12 Rue des Martyrs. That's where she disemboweled your mother to steal you from me. It's not that I regret all these discussions, but I must hurry to the wharf. What is at stake here far outweighs our personal interests. Our personal I'm... interests? You betrayed me. Emily, no! But wait, how has Sarah betrayed you? I don't believe it. You still don't get it. I'm not Emily, stupid. You went as far as killing your own sister? You're the one who pointed her out. You only have yourself to blame. Oh, dear God! Surprise, Sarah! You can't just get rid of me like that, you old hag! Do you realize what you did? Emily loved you, Emma. You endured everything together. You were never alone. It's... you have no idea what I had to endure. But it must have been the same for Emily. You both went through so much. She always saved the worst situations for me. How many times have I had to climb into bed with some man I'd never even seen before because Emily had seduced him during the day? Emma, it's obvious you suffered a great deal because of the path your lives took. But don't try convincing yourself that your sister didn't suffer too. Duchess, I am sorry about what happened. You had a choice! You use people according to your desires without any scruples. Excuse me, but we are in the same line of business. Shut it! And Emily knew it very well. No, Emma, look at me. She would never endanger herself for the sake of the Order. Her sense of duty gave way to her personal interest. In the end, Sir Gregory was the only one who was truly honest with me. He has opened my eyes more in two days than my sister did in a whole lifetime. Sir Gregory? You've got to be joking, right? You're not really going to trust him, are you? I trust Gregory. He's always honest with me.
Emma, why do you follow home? Why? Why? <gasps> Always questions. Just shut up, for God's sake. There's been enough deaths. No, it, it isn't fair. I haven't done all this for nothing. Home promised me I could be the only Duchess Hillsborough from now on. Emma, stop it. Come with me. She deserves to die, Louis. Every word she utters is a lie. I'm not joking. You should never believe what she says. One day, she will betray you, too. She already has. I've just found out she's not my mother, Emma. You will not die by my hand today, Sarah. She deserves to die. In fact, I think that honor goes to you. Just you and me now. I really thought my next breath would be my last. Well, anything's possible. This is no time to be joking. Just help me climb aboard this boat, and let's get off of this cursed island. No, I'm not going anywhere, and neither are you, until you've told me everything. For crying out loud, what are you talking about? Paris, 1763, number 12 on Rue des Martyrs. No. I beg you, please trust me. He's manipulating you. We must leave. Paris. Can't you see he wants you? And he'll do anything to turn you against me? Number 12 on Rue des Martyrs. He had to pay for what he did to me. I panicked. There she was with the baby do. I thought it was the right time to touch it, but To when... touch it? By disemboweling her and stealing me from her? The girl was already condemned to die. He never leaves any witnesses behind. She meant nothing to him. And I absolutely had to find a way of stopping him. You snatched a newborn baby from its mother's womb with the sole goal of seeking revenge. From the second I took you in, I couldn't bear to be apart from you. I looked after you, fed you, raised you like a mother. I know. You always took care of me. I devoted my whole life to teaching you to distinguish between right and wrong, so you would have the choice. You are not like him. But, but you never told me. I wanted to. I very nearly told you everything at least a dozen times. You didn't, though, did you? Why? I, I, I don't know, Louis. I couldn't. Not after Venice. Talk to me about Venice. Oh, no. I... Louis, let's go. I'll tell you everything once we get home. Now come. You never wanted us to speak about it again. Winter, 1791. Do you remember? Louis, no. We agreed to never speak about it again. Now I understand. We were on the trail of a businessman. We broke into his place one night. We ran into his wife. Not that, Louis. It's in the past. She, too, was pregnant. Was he Mortimer's as well? Louis, I... Answer! Yes! What became of the child? I gave it away. For him, too? You became his mother, didn't you? No, I gave him to a couple who couldn't have children. I never saw him again. How many children have you stolen from him? I saved all of you, Louis. I gave you a normal life. How many? There are two of you. Louis, yes. I made mistakes in the past, but now I'm ready to- Do you consider me a mistake? No, not you. You are what I am most proud of in my whole life. You are good. You fight to do right. You are not like him. Still, he is my father. Why did you steal me? You don't want to know, believe me. For once in your life, be honest. Why all this mess? Why do you have it in for him so much? Why? Because I'm his daughter. I know what he's doing. I see he has his eye on you. He's hovering around you, tempting you. 
he did it to me before you. And if you don't live up to his expectations, he will cast you away. Is that what happened to you? I wasn't good enough for him. So he rejected me. What do you mean? He tried to initiate me, but it would seem I am unable to develop his talent. I can't withdraw my mind from my body. I get it. The reason why you abducted me is because he didn't love you, isn't it? He doesn't love anyone, Louis. Don't be taken in. I'm a little mixed up, but I do understand your choice. You were wrong not to speak to me about it before, but I understand that you didn't want to leave me with him. Oh, thank you, Louis. I promise never to lie to you again, my son. Come, let's go home. I can't. What do you mean? Why not? I've got to know. Trust me. We'll meet in Paris. He wants you, Louis. He will never let you go. Don't worry. Here. This is yours. Don't forget, Louis. You've got the lance. You can beat him. If you hit him with it, he won't be able to escape from his mortal envelope, and he will die with it. Oh. Oh. Really hope it was the right lens, then. Rational and open. I spent my whole life swimming in lies. Emily, what a waste. I feel like I know nothing. That I have to learn everything all over again. I'm a demon. I age more slowly. I can mentally manipulate people. I don't even know if it's a good thing or a curse. Frankly, I, I feel like I'm cursed. I hope I'll be able to control this new skill, otherwise my life will be hell. Damn it, what a mess. Come on, man up, Louis. I'm still the same old me. Demon or not, I'm still in charge of my actions. And this father, I know nothing about. Yes, I've still got a lot to learn. It's enough to drive you crazy. Everything I believed in, nothing holds true anymore. Pull yourself together, man. I need to find some answers. There's no way of being alone for a minute. Sir Gregory? Good day, Louis. I think it would be good to talk. How are you feeling? I don't know. I understand. I heard that William spoke to you at last about our nature and our family. It's a good thing, but you must be a bit shaken up. That's the least you can say. I bid you welcome among us, Louis. Knowing William, he probably didn't go into any detail about our family, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh. 
How many of us are there in the family? We are eight brothers and sisters. I gotta say it's a bit. What do you mean by brothers and sisters if we can change bodies? You reason with logic. Uh, we have retained the human habit. When we first come into this world, we retain a certain attachment to our first envelope. If we are born as a man, we are brothers. If we are born as a woman, we are sisters. But I must admit, it has absolutely no real importance. They're just bodies. Well, tell me then, are there any other families like ours? There are officially seven, but we're the oldest and therefore the most powerful. Is there a head of the family? You'll see. You'll meet them all, of course. When you are ready, they created us and set out the rules, especially our father. As for our mother, she retired from the political stage. We don't see her much anymore. I think that all these questions simply bore her. How long has our family been in existence? We have been here since the very beginning. What do you mean, exactly? Are you trying to get information from me? Uh, I, no, not at all. I, I was just wondering why that particular question seemed to disturb you. Uh, let us not insist, then. You yourself weren't very convinced by the question, it seems. What's Lord Mortimer's problem? I think he allows himself to be devoured by a need for... Recognition. Has he always been like that? More or less, but thinking about it, I believe that the birth of our latest sibling greatly accentuated his discomfort. Do you think he's jealous? I didn't realize you were so good at behavioral analysis. Indeed, William certainly is prone to jealousy. Finding one's place, notably in the eyes of our father, is not easy. And we each do what we can to succeed. But I can't justify this perpetual rebellion against our rules. I see. There is still much to learn. Yes, it's true. You've got some catching up to do, my boy. One thing you must understand regarding any disagreements that might arise between William and myself is his position with regard to mankind. W what do you mean? Well, for centuries we've been trying to help and therefore preserve humanity. Monarchies are simple and practical. They enable us to inspire humanity efficiently, and I can't understand why William wants to replace them with democracy. But if your intention is not to dominate the human race, why not let them be master of their own destinies? I perfectly understand this type of reaction from you, Less from William. The main thing you're lacking is time. Man is transient, and one of his particularities is that he does not learn from the errors of his peers. He uses up an incredible Thank amount of energy building and destroying whatever he himself has put into place. If we weren't here to help them, guide them, I sincerely believe that humanity would have become extinct by now. On the other hand, we are eternal. When we plan ahead, we do it for the long term. Hmm. Well, indeed, from that point of view, it is better to, to guide them. It's rare for a novice demon to manage to stop thinking like a man so quickly. It has taken centuries for our family to establish relative peace between demons. Thanks to this policy, we have been able to decide everything by confining the other families to subordinate roles. And now William is obsessed with disrupting everything. Peace between demons? What do you mean? I'm not talking about conflicts within our family. If that was all there was, everything would be fine. But several other families, younger but none are trying to upset the balance at present, we dominate most of the major countries around the globe, but some families are pushing, via less influential countries, to gain ground. Do you understand? As best I can, yes. When the time comes, you must take up a position on the political chessboard. 
I only hope your father doesn't take you down with him. Uh, are you suggesting he, he might be in danger? Well, Louis, our father's patience is not limitless. If William ever does go too far, then yes, he will be in danger. I want you to make an informed choice. Now go and see your father, see what he has to say, and then think it over very carefully. That's exactly what I intended to do. Thank you, Uncle. Don't mention it. If I've been able to help you in any way, go now. Forum guide. Louis, busy as always, I see. How lucky you are. I must admit I'm trying to kill the boredom myself. I get the impression we're all in the same boat. And here I was thinking you might have some juicy gossip. <laughs> Me? No, nothing at all. And you? I would like to be able to say yes, but it's been dead quiet. The only one with anything to say is Dick Manuel. But with that accent of his, I don't understand a word he says. It's exasperating. Right. I've wasted enough time. I'll keep our conversation to myself, Mr. President. Anyway, I must be going now. See you later, Louis. Louis, I was sure you would stay. I'm proud of you. You've made the right choice. It took great maturity to forgive your sister as you did. She brought me up. I, I realized I owed her a lot. We all make mistakes, as Sarah well knows. Why didn't you tell me the truth about her? I thought that might be too many truths to absorb at one time. I intended to tell you afterwards. You were in a hurry, so I made a decision. You've been able to understand and choose for yourself. How do you feel? Hard to say. Confused about everything? I have to admit, it's, it's been a lot to take in in such a short amount of time. What could be more normal? It may have been a bit brutal, but you've just grown up in a very short space of time. From now on, you can influence your own future. I will guide you. We've all the time we need. You're not the first to make me that offer. What do you mean by that? Your brother, Sir Gregory. Gregory. Why am I not even surprised? What did he say?
I think he's worried about you. Worried? <laughs> Marvelous. That's just like him. You know, in a family like ours, we all have a role to play. And his is to worry about everyone else. Let me reassure you, there's no reason for him to worry about me. Like the relationship with your father, for example. I... It, it's sometimes complicated, I must admit. I like to understand things, even if it means thinking outside the box. In fact, that's a character trait that you seem to have inherited. You haven't answered about your father. What did I tell you? You are too curious, my son. Let time do its work. I don't impose anything on anyone. I'm just following my own path. But where does it lead? Hmm, I, I suppose I should explain. For centuries now, demons have emerged in and around great leaders all over the world. But like true tyrants, they have governed with an iron fist in a studded glove. That's the impression I get. But you see, people's discontent is increasing, and they are too high up to hear it. They take themselves for gods. Sooner or later, the people will turn against us, just as they have in the past. Each time it's happened, many of us have died. We must master the humans, yes, but gently. And the best way of doing that is by allowing them a free choice, Louis. So that's your project? Of course not entirely, no. It is easier to keep control over people who slumber than people who are oppressed. A man with nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Whereas, if you give him a roof, food, and entertainment, he will do whatever you want. The best way of getting them to achieve something is to make them think it was their idea. For that, they have to feel as if they are free. Hang on. What do you mean? Look at the United States. From the start, I introduced an idea that will change everything. The idea that everything is possible. Everyone can become someone. Is there anything more beautiful? You mean it's not true? Man can move mountains when he believes it is in his own interest. And what nobler cause is there than his own freedom? Do you have any more examples? Of course. Talk to me about slavery. Well, take the slave trade, for example. It's an archaic practice that simply has to stop. Today, Black slaves of America work for free and in unbearable conditions. Tomorrow, if you free the blacks and offer them work along with a salary, they will bless you for it. Then, they will be integrated into the system. They will be taxable. Once they are free, they will have to work for a roof, pay taxes, and feed their families. Maybe we could take away the civil rights of prisoners, for example. In this way, We'll keep control of all those who respect the system and benefit from the others as workforce. And what would you propose for women? They must be given the right to work and to vote. Look, at the moment, they don't work. They take care of raising children. What a mistake. We have to get them out of the house. Make them work. In this way, not only will they become consumers, but they will also delegate the job of education to the system. We could guide humanity from a young age, Louis, don't you see? Today, we are wasting too much time. What obscurantism. By harping on this concept of good and evil, guilt and redemption, look where men are now, locked up in beliefs that should no longer exist. It's time for men to rediscover themselves and to take control of their lives, as they really are, without any moral judgment. Tell me what you think about progress. Progress is essential, Louis. It's the future. What else? Progress must liberate humanity from burdensome chores. Progress must replace man, whatever his presence is not a It creates both the desire and the need. It will liberate women. As soon as the machines are able to do all the chores in the home automatically, it will bring men together by bringing a faster means of locomotion. Look at the cultural revolution that printing brought about. But the most important of all has already been laid. 
the foundation stone, freedom of speech. The first amendment of the constitution. There must be opponents to every project. So above all, don't develop a one track approach. Otherwise man won't have enough room for expression to feel free. If man sees his chains, he will only want to break them. If we give men the feeling that they are free, I am convinced that they will exceed their limits. And it is only from that condition that humanity shall rise up. But do you want to dominate or raise humanity higher? I want it to advance. I want it to progress. Man is our vessel. If he progresses, then so do we. Wouldn't you like to know what we really are? Who do you mean? Demons? Yes, us. Our species. I've been searching for centuries, trying to find a way to explain the reason of our existence, but humanity has not yet evolved enough to make any progress on the subject. I am convinced that the sciences will bring that knowledge someday. So, that's your objective, is it? To understand who we are? I see your point. Our family clings to its privileges and to the past, and that's how they are putting us in danger. The time has come for change. Now that you know your true nature, there are still a few things I need to teach you. What do you mean exactly? A new skill, and not the least, Louis. It's about taking control of a person. How do you do it? It's an anima resonance. How it works is still a bit unclear even to us. Like a wave or a sound? That seems the most likely, yes. In my opinion, demons are capable of tuning their psychic frequency to that of others. That is why, for example, I tend to surround myself with deaf and dumb servants. The servants dressed in black. I infiltrated them. I opened a channel between them and me, and then I deprived them of speech and hearing. This way, no other demon can turn them against me. Okay, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> I deduce that you're impatient to master what's in store for you. That is good. I thought I'd mix business with pleasure for this first time. What do you mean by that? The conference will come to a close shortly, as you know. Not that I'm fed up with archaic diplomacy, but it's time to ensure the success of this project. To make this happen, I would like Piaget to inform the Pope he has changed signs. You... you're going to use your powers to alter the votes? The real game is about to begin, Louis. Up till now, the guests have been sizing each other up. From now on, it's time for Gregory and myself to play as well as you yourself. Now, here is my plan. I would like you to join his eminence in his room. Just play along. We'll see when the time comes. Very well. And then? You're going to have to trust me. What we're going to do is painless for the human you are going to invade. Invade? Yes. You're going to enter his mind and take control. You're going to influence his actions and his psyche. Make him speak, then concentrate. You must focus on him in order to feel his thoughts. Then, while speaking, you must link with him. Once you're done, you will naturally find your way to the source and enter into his thoughts. But what if I fail? Trust in your instincts. You just have to let yourself go. You have the skill. Let your nature come to the fore. You'll see. If you fail, you'll be in for some light banter with his eminence. That's all. There's nothing to be afraid of. Very well. Perfect. Go now. The Cardinal is in his room. You will have to write a letter to the Pope, as if Piaggi had written it himself. In this letter, tell the Pope that whatever happens during the conference, he must follow my propositions. But be careful. In order to protect himself from counterfeiters, the Pope had Piaggi's hand tattooed with a symbol to be sure of his identity. You'll see when you're inside him. You'll understand. Once it's written up, just bring it back to me and I'll send it off immediately. All right, I'll take care of it.
again seems like you've seen them. Female fortune and technical guys. The demons aren't supposed to interfere with these conferences. Um, Mortimer isn't gonna interfere. That's why he's getting me to do it. That's not technically against the rules. Which is very... unsettling. Ah, well, Louis, what brings you back to my chambers? May I sit down? Of course, Louis. Don't you feel good? Yes, but if I'm gonna pass inside you, I'd better sit myself down first. It's nothing, don't worry about it. Well, what can I do for you? Right. Now I need to concentrate. I wanted to speak to you, Your Eminence. What exactly is your role with regard to the Holy Father? I... What? What on earth is he playing at? It's coming. You're a cardinal in Pictori. Why don't you admit it? Impertinent little brat. Louis, I don't find this conversation in very good taste. All right, it's coming. Come on, Giuseppe, let me in. What? I've done it. I've done it, damn it. He was right. This is just crazy. I can't believe it. Look at yourself, Louis. You better not get caught. Whoa. I still need to get used to this body. So, let's see about what Mortimer asked me. Right. Well, it's time I got started. Let's see what I can find here to help me write that letter. I have no means to validate my forgery, so I better take my time with them and not make any mistakes. There are two letters from the Pope on the desk. I should be able to get a clue or two by checking how well they correspond to each other. And here are three stamps. All are different. Happy. My health does not allow me to honor Sir Holmes's invitation to go to Lord Mortimer's. I should be grateful if you would sit at a conference on my behalf. Naturally, you give my thanks to your host. Consolidate arguments with Sir Gregory and let him know that his venture regarding Cardinal Bishop Fairmonty is following its course. I am very confident in you. May God bless and protect you. It says Giovanni Angelo Brassi. Yes, do not use your personal stamp in writing to me. Instead, use the one with my motto on it. Okay. Okay, don't know what that is. Hmm. Hey there, just a I know you're on your way to Lord First resident. I hope you have a good trip. Even though you, even though you are obliged to cross the French countryside, at present very agitated. Know that this mission is crucial, my friend. May God bless and protect you. Alright.
Right. Well, let's start writing. Lord Mortimer asked me to discredit Sir Gregory and to announce Piaggi's final vote in his favor. As an introduction, Your Holiness, thank you for your trust. As we inform Sir Gregory, it is of absolute necessity that Lord Mortimer's projects do not come to fruition. We're talking about the future of the Holy See. There's a kind of code composed of six letters that they always write under the dates of their correspondence. According to Mortimer, it's got something to do with Piaggi's tattoo. I guess I'll have to write one for today's date. Now, ideally, it'd be better to do without it, but I'm going to need to be extremely clever here. Today, the date is 2401 <laughs> In the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaggi's tattoo. It must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Some figures are the same in both codes, yet they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. The date is Okay, so 
Today the date is 2401-1793. 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 Today is the 2401-1793. one of the letters, the Pope asked Piaggi to change and to stop using his personal stamp. He asked him to use the one with the Pope's motto on it. And I remember that. Flore in Domo Domini. Justizia, misericordia e umiltà. Boy, I gotta brush up my foreign languages. I think it's in Italian. Justice, mercy, and humility. A circle with a cross inside. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini. Latin, it blooms in the house of God. Your eminence, all ready to send... What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry, he can't hear us. What do you mean, he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? Just calm down, calm down. Louis came to see me because he claimed he was hearing voices. We've just finished an exorcism session. An exorcism? Are you having me on? I can't see any exorcism instruments. That's because I just put them away. I don't know what you're up to, Piaggi. But I do know you're trying to pull one over on me. I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go... There he is. And there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Can you keep a secret?
No, I don't think I'd like to know about anything that would justify such an act. I don't know what's wrong with you, but you really must pull yourself together. The conference will soon be on us, and I don't need you falling to pieces now. Don't worry, I shall be there. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. And this is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? The slime bag. He works for Mortimer. Uh, good thing I already tried to warn Gregory. Committing a crime in my room is out of the question. Think, it will all be on our heads. No doubt about it. I, I refuse to run the risk. Right. Monsieur Von Von, I always act in the best interest of all. I assure you. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. You must have lost your mind to want to take such an extreme course of action. No one's asking you to help me do it. He is capable of reporting me to Sir Gregory. Uh, I'm really risking my neck here. If you lay a finger on him, I'll denounce you to Sir Gregory. I'm warning you. You old weasel! Very well, Piaggi, you win. I refuse to let you do the first thing that comes into your head. I don't know what the two of you are up to, but I'll find out sooner or later. Right. Time for me to get back into my body. waiting for you in the Red Salon. Gary. So, Louis, what was your first time like? Bewildering, isn't it? Here's your letter. I have to admit, the experience was utterly amazing. Come, tell me more. Well, honestly, I... 
My stomach was just turning in circles. <laughs> that reminds me of my first time. Ooh. But you did it. Gregory, what can I do for you? I've just come to make sure dear Louis has all the information he needs. Needs for what? You are free to make your own choices, William. I would like the same for him, too. There's nothing I want more, Gregory. Your schemes will lead to your demise, brother. Don't involve Louis. He has nothing to do with all this. The end of the conference approaches, and this masquerade will soon be torn asunder. Don't drag him down with you in your disgrace. Oh, ye of little faith. On the contrary, brother, Louis has just entered the family. Give him a chance to find his place. His place? What place is that? At the end of a leash, like all the others. Don't listen to him. He's angry with our father. And with good reason. He governs us in the same way he governs humanity. Through fear and submission. Same old tune. When will you understand that it's necessary to impose order for things to move forward properly? You are under his thumb and proud of it. Open your eyes for crying out loud. His whole system has become outdated and he's too old to see it. He will lead us to our demise. There he goes with another of his grand speeches. William has always been fond of staging big scenes. It's his theatrical side. Does he have an inferiority complex? I've told him time and time again, Louis. He always has to take it one step too far. How dare you? You are blind, brother. Even if the evidence bit you on the nose, you still wouldn't see it. I feel sorry for you. Tea is drunk hot or not at all, William. When will you learn? It's too bitter. You shouldn't let it brew so long. I knew you'd be coming along. You are so predictable. Methodical, I would say. Things must be accomplished in the right order if we want the world to keep turning as it does. When you speak of the right order, I can't help hearing your order. Louis, wouldn't you think that by now we've acquired a certain experience? Don't you think that we're the best place to know what the right order should be by now? I mostly understand that even with the best of intentions, this kind of talk could well be misinterpreted. Every powerful man has had to speak in this way at some stage. That doesn't mean that they were right or that they achieved great things. Take the kings of France, for example. They weren't all good monarchs. You see, Louis, Gregory came here to make you change your mind. It's time for things to change. I acknowledge Father has done many good things for humanity, but his time is over, and now he must pass on the torch. That's enough. There, Louis. That's the pathetic example your father has to offer. I really am sorry about what happened to you. You don't know our family yet. We can't have given you a very good impression, but bear in mind that we are all against William's project. On the contrary. If he insists on going through with it, we will have no other choice than to intervene by force. Consequently, my dear Louis, you're going to have to choose sides. I would much rather have met you in different circumstances. There you are, Louis. See what happens when you don't follow their orders to the letter. Louis, I'm afraid the time to decide is now. <coughs> If you follow William, he will drag you down with him. If, on the other hand, you support me, I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. You won't be blamed for your father's errors. Ah, the masks are off. I offer you liberty. He obliges you to choose, and shamelessly asks you to betray your own father. That is their true face. Right. Before I answer, well, I better think it over very carefully. Do I intend to embrace my demon nature and take my place on the chessboard? Do I stay out of it and do my utmost to stop them? Or do I renounce my nature and do all I can to stay human? I was born a man. I, I grew up as such. 
finding out that I'm a demon makes no difference. I refuse to let them manipulate humanity the way they do. They're gonna ask me to choose between them. I'll just have to go with the lesser evil of the two. But they better not count on me to keep my word. I'll bring them all down. So? <coughs> what do you choose, Louis? Father, I'm sorry, but if I'm going to follow my instincts, I can't in good conscience follow you. What? But I hope you won't take it personally, but I prefer to support Sir Gregory. Very well. You have made your choice. It's time we finished what we started, brother. The final vote of the conference over the acquisition of Louisiana will take place in a few hours. I propose you gather your troops and prepare to close the debate. That's precisely what I was going to suggest. The other way. Yes. Well. Well, my friend, here we all are. <laughs> Wait, oh, he's like, he's like, Isn't oh. the Duchess meant to be with us? No, she's resting in her room. Don't worry, the confidence can resume. Now, we all know that tensions have been running high, but now is not the moment to give in. I really don't understand why Lord Mortimer insists. Yes, indeed. It will only take one of you opposing his project to win the conference. But I would rather have us united until the end. Meanwhile, let us remain on our guard against any last-minute surprises. I know my brother well. He never prepares for war if he has no chance of winning. the game kind of like proposes that um, there were like all these monarchies and 
like now all of a sudden there's like democracy and that was due to the demons although that's not really true because like think the Romans, like they had the Roman Senate, you know, they had, um, I think, I mean, like, American government has a root in Romans, and they saw the value of having representatives of all sides come together and talk about issues and like, find a common ground or compromise or whatever, so, like, yeah, it's not like that democracy was unheard of before that, before the reign of the monarchies. That's interesting. Anyways, um, so if you like what you saw, um, like, comment, subscribe, follow, hit the bell for notifications, I want Twitch to learn YouTube, I'll have your streams, um, check my sketch Twitch schedule page to see when I'll be streaming, and check my Twitter for any last minute changes to the schedule. Um, yeah, so I will be finishing this next week. Um, until then, I'm just gonna play like whatever. I'm not sure. Um, I think tomorrow I was gonna do some Fortnite, and then after that, I'll just see whatever I'm in the mood for. So I hope you enjoyed the stream, and hope to catch you the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.